Good morning, Kingsway. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. You know the usual thing, wake up, get up, get out of bed, make your breakfast and worship with us this morning. Don't forget to click that share button. Let someone know that you're watching a worship moment. Worship with us, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on, begin to speak to him right here. Thank you, Lord. He's coming on a cloud. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. It's real simple. Let's worship him together this morning, singing the song unto Jesus. Oh, hey. He's coming on the cloud, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. As broken hearts declare his praise, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Come on, you get it now. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. We declare who he is this morning. Thank you, Father. Coming on a cloud, kings and kingdoms will bow down. Thank you, Father. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? We're talking about Jesus. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before him. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. For the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before. Oh, sing one more time. Come on, sing it out. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Slain for the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Every knee will 
will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. That's a promise. Every knee will bow before the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Hey. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Thank you, Jesus. If you're just joining us this morning, welcome. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Don't be afraid to worship with us. I know you're in your bedroom, in your living room, in your kitchen, but don't be afraid to lift your hands and to sing along with us today. God is still deserving of our worship. He's deserving of our praise. He's deserving of everything that we have. So today we give him our life. We give him our will. We give him our attention. We lay our crowds at his feet and we give him everything today. And as you worship again, don't forget to press that share button and share this worship experience with someone else today. Thank you, Jesus. Come well, on, you know this song. Sing my heart's forever, my heart's forever. My heart's forever yours. Thank you, God. My heart's forever. My heart's forever. My heart's forever yours. So my heart's forever. My heart's forever. My heart's forever yours. My heart's forever. My heart's forever, my heart's forever yours. As we enter this place, we bow down, crying holy. We cast down our crowns, our desire is you and you alone. Well, I'll sing that again. As we enter, this place we bow down crying holy we cast out our crowns our desire is you and you alone let's sing it together sing my heart's forever my heart's forever my heart's forever yours make this vow to him my heart's forever, my heart's forever, my heart's forever, yours. Come on, sing it again. My heart's forever. Come on, let me hear you. My heart's forever, yours. My heart's forever, my heart's forever, my heart's forever. As we enter this place, we bow down, crying holy. We cast out our crowns, our desire is you and you alone. Well, let's sing it again to him. As we enter this place, we bow down. Desire is you and you 
on Facebook each Wednesday at 8 p.m. for Bible study and prayer. Please invite your family and friends to join us as we study the Word of God and spend time in prayer. Looking forward to seeing you as we continue our mission to love people back to life and destiny. For the truth to be heard, for my hurt to be calmed. I write for the stories unknown, for my love to be told. There are times where writing is all that I can do. No fixing or replacing, my arms, muscles are through. I write to reach inward, for my heart to lay bare. I write to move forward, for my hope to catch flame. It makes everything still, making room for God's will. It's my prayer written too. There is nothing that his pen can't do, undo, redo, and live through. I write to be free. Every day, I'm being hunted and My people don't want no trouble. Good morning, church. It's a great day to get into the Word of God. Isaiah said that the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the Word of God will stand forever. And today, in spite of all of the changes that we're seeing and experiencing in our world, I believe that we can rely on the Word of God as the one true constant. I believe God sent us a word today that's relevant to the season that we are in, to challenge us and to clarify where we are and to give us direction to where we're going as a community of believers. I want to invite you to join me in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 15. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 8. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, but you can follow along with the version you have in front of you. The Bible says, Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble, 
they would turn to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, and they found him. In those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation, city against city, for God troubled them with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard this message from the prophet Azariah, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. This morning, I want to speak to you from a topic that you may have heard echoed in our society uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, I want you to make a declaration with me. I want you to say it loud and proud with a fist in the air. Use an emoji in the comment section uh, if you can. But I want you to make this declaration with me. I want you to say that my life matters. Today, I want you to know that in this generation, the idea that what you see is what you get has now become a thing of the past. The narratives of reality are clouded and manipulated by opinions and outright deceit. Rarely does the truth get the opportunity to shine through. Nowadays, truth gets manipulated by social media blog posts and tweets and filters, and reality gets covered up with half-truths or whole lies. If the truth is told, our generation has been fed on a steady diet of misinformation. Because instead of going to the source for our news, we follow trending timelines and hashtags that only give us one side of the story and often confirm the biases that we already have. But in an age where a recording can show criminal activity being caught on tape and no charges are laid or a not guilty verdict being rendered, this must mean that there is a chink in the fabric of a system that espouses to protect all people. So while all this is happening, families are torn apart, lives are broken, and tormented people all over the world are crying aloud, my life matters. But only to be silenced with the rhetoric that all lives matter. But the question still remains, how can all lives matter if my life doesn't matter to you? See, these stories continue to get a silence, not with civil discussion, but because one story becomes louder than another. And it's a shame that the story can be flipped, that the victim can have somehow deserved the punishment of the crime that was perpetrated against them. So in the midst of this global health pandemic, we are also plagued with a global social pandemic. Tensions with people of color, racialized populations, in particular, the black community. And it's simple to point the finger at the other side or blame or throw shade at people who don't share your views or come from your background. It's easy to talk about the social and economic injustices, uh, but today I want us as believers to take an introspective look at where we are. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17, it says that for the time has come, and I believe that that time is right now, that judgment must first begin in the household of God. Whether or not we want to acknowledge it, it's embedded in the subconscious of our Western Christian society that some lives matter more than others. Recently, a respected American evangelical pastor was recorded saying the following, and I quote, we miss the blessing of slavery, that it actually built up the framework of the world that white people live in. And so a lot of people call this white privilege. If this phrase is a trip up, let's get over the phrase and let's get down to the heart. I think it's great for me to call it white blessing, end quote. So then it's clear that there's a history that needs to be addressed. But before we can correct it, we must confront it. But before I continue and before I'm accused of not being faithful to the assignment of preaching the gospel, I want to remind you of the poignant parable of our master who taught us of a weary traveler on his way to Jericho. He said both a priest and a Levite saw his condition and went out of their way to avoid him. But an unnamed Samaritan man came 
and had compassion for him, bandaged his wounds, and took care of all of his needs. Jesus was teaching us that a religious spirit can identify a problem and bring no solutions, but it takes a true heart that is in sync with the heart of God to be moved by the plight of others and to be concerned enough or bothered enough to do something about it. So today, I pray that God would provoke your spirit to be liberated from the impotence of the religious spirit into a meaningful demonstration of the love and power of God that's at work in your life. So today, I don't care about your ethnicity or your race, your economic status, your gender, or your sexuality. I don't care what happened to you or what happened by you. It doesn't take for me to have to agree with all of your decisions to make the declaration that your life matters. And all lives cannot matter if some lives matter more than others. And so today we find important lessons that are taught to us out of the pages of the books of Chronicles. So the Chronicles are history books that run parallel with the books of the Kings. Uh, they're given to us like train tracks that are laid across uh, the landscape of the history of the people of God who speak about the legacy of their people, their prophets, and their kings. But it's important to note that what began as a united kingdom was torn into two kingdoms, a northern and a southern kingdom, because of the ignorance and disobedience of one man by the name of King Solomon that was perpetuated from one generation to another. His son, Rehoboam, who was the first king of Judah, he, the Bible says, did evil in the sight of the Lord and forsook his law and took the entire nation of Israel with him. My question to you this morning, whoever's watching me, is, is how are your decisions affecting those around you? Did you know that the decisions you make don't have the ability just to affect your life? but it has the ability to change the trajectory of lives around you and for generations to come. During his reign, the Bible says that, that Shishak, who was the king of Egypt, came into Jerusalem and he allowed him to take out all of the treasures that were in the house of God. Everything that was pure about the faith, he allowed the world to come in and take it. He allowed the world to come and take the power, come and take the word, come and take the healing, everything that was precious and set apart. He allowed the world to carry it away. And this perpetuated even to his son, Abijah. So the scripture says Abijah, who was the second son of a uh, second king of Judah, uh, he uh, made priests after the manner of other nations and other lands. In other words, this suggests that he made holy men who were uh, meant to be Levites set apart for the work and the things of God. Uh, he made them into nothing more uh, than organizational leaders, CEOs, and life coaches. And they didn't preach the unadulterated and the purity of the word of God. Uh, and today, my prayer is that God would resurrect the voice of the preacher who would preach the whole counsel of God with boldness, nothing added and nothing removed to the word of God, that it would be in this day, the foolishness of preaching that would spark a revival that would turn the world upside down for the glory of God. But in those days, generations after generations came and what displeased God became normal to them. It was normal that they had mixed in worship to other gods and, and put altars to foreign gods uh, in the city. But it came to a critical point in the history of Israel and Judah that changes needed to be made. And I pray that in this season that we recognize that we are at a critical point in our history that something needs to be done. And so God raised up a new leader by the name of Asa. Asa would take the throne and Asa understood that there needed to be repairs done to the city. Too long was there band-aid solutions that were given to deep-seated and systemic issues. See, political correctness and performative justice was no longer patronizing. An entire system had to come down. That means the monuments and the altars, the foreign gods and all manner of evil that was mixed with the holy worship of God needed to come down. 
he couldn't put whitewash on decaying walls any longer. And today, uh, in our church society, oftentimes we, we decorate our mess and our dysfunction and we put church clothes over it or we cover it with Christian vernacular that masks our own hypocrisy and intolerance. See, some of us are too comfortable exposing the shortcomings of others and not addressing the issues that are in our life. And today I pray that God would make you uncomfortable in the way that you judge others for the sins that you are committing yourself. And so uh, the Bible says that God raised up a prophet Azariah to speak truth to power. My prayer today is that God would raise you up to speak the truth even when it's unpopular, to speak the truth even when a world doesn't want to hear it. And so the Bible says, Azariah spoke to the king and said, King, if you seek God, you'll find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. And I believe that we are in a time, we're in a season uh, of our history that God is revealing some things to us. See, we ask God to make 2020 the year of vision, the year that we would see clearly. And I believe that God answered that prayer. This is the year that God has taken off the scales off of our eyes and we see where we are and we see who is authentic. And so the Bible says that Asa, he had a heart that was holy after the Lord and his father left his father left uh, the land at peace however there were still problems that existed in the land he said that all of the the foreign gods and all of the uh, altars that were erected in the city it was now time for it to come down and so the bible says that he took tools and demolished all of the high places and all of the altars to the strange gods uh, my prayer in this season that is that god would bother us god would provoke us to see that even in the midst of what we call peace that he would show us and reveal to us that that there is a problem that exists beyond the service and I pray today that you would not just be bothered enough to follow a trend but you would be bothered enough to be a part of the change so the Bible says that God uh, rose up Asa and he ordered a tear down in the city uh, second Chronicles chapter 14 and 3 says that he broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images so today my prayer is that everyone that is watching me this morning would say that there were some things uh, that are deep-seated that are generational that you may not have put up but it existed before you so you might not be responsible for the problem but listen you can be responsible for the future because the future relies on the decisions that you make today and and I believe that now in this season we have to make up in our minds and make the decision that enough is enough enough is enough for racism enough is enough for classism enough is enough for uh, uh, living in privilege and we have to understand that we cannot continue like this and we cannot build on this shaky foundation but we have to level it and rebuild from the beginning and I pray that somebody in this season would hear the voice of the preacher that is preaching to the church that says that you ought to return to your first love and in this season God is saying that he doesn't want you to continue to build before you tear up the foundation and so uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah he says thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem break up your fallow grounds and do not sow a amongst thorns and I'm prophesying to somebody in this season that if you want to see God give you fruit in your life if you want to see God give you the manifestation of the things that which you're praying for God is saying that you have to break up the faulty foundation before you plant seeds for your future and I pray this morning that somebody would have the courage enough to break up the fallow ground and prepare to plant new seeds because there were some things that have grown in our past that have have now come to choke out uh, the fruit that God wants to birth in your life uh, but the Bible lets us know that the weapons hear this of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds hear this 
casting down arguments. So that means there are some things that we have to stop talking about. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing everything uh, into captivity and make it obedient to Christ. Uh, so there are some discussions that we need to stop having. There are some things that we need to stop saying about people, labels that we need to stop putting on people. We need to tear it down before we can build it up. And I'm speaking to somebody this morning that, that, that the label that somebody put on you caused you to think that your life doesn't matter. But I'm speaking to you today and I'm praying that you would find significance not in the label that people gave you, but you would find significance in the label that God gave you. God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says that you are the head and not the tail. God says that you are above only and never beneath. So today I pray that you would not listen for the affirmation of the world, that you would not listen for the affirmation of people, that you would not wait for a blue check to be verified because you are already approved by God. And I need somebody to take a quick break to praise God even right there, that you don't have to live on the approval of people because God has already said to you that you are my beloved son and in you I am well pleased. I dare somebody right there in their living room, right there in their den, right there in your kitchen to begin to give God praise even right now because you are approved by God and your life matters. And today, uh, uh, God is giving us a simple message to let us know that in order for us to build up into the next season, God wants us. God requires us to tear down some altars, to tear down some things uh, that have come before us so that we can build up the future that's going to honor him. And I pray today, as God raised up Azariah, that God would raise up prophetic voices. And these prophetic voices is not just to prophesy an economic turnaround, not just to prophesy that money and houses are coming, not just to prophesy that you're going to get married. But I pray that God raises up a prophet that would restore the collective consciousness of the people of God so that we can carry the light into the dark world and let the people know know that needs to hear it, that their life matters, that your life matters so much to God that while you are yet a sinner, God sent his son and died for you so that you can have access to the tree of life. So until we go back in our history and tear down the monuments, destroy the mindsets and correct the conversations, it will not change. And I believe in that God is raising you up even in this hour as John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness that says, prepare ye the way of the Lord and to make his path straight. You're not somebody who's just supposed to echo another voice, but God is raising you up because your life matters. And Azariah says that if we turn to God, that God will be found. And today I pray that you will know what the Lord Lord requires of you. God says that he requires for you to remove the detestable idolatry that exists in our life and in our culture, the detestable idols of racism, classism, colorism, and xenophobia. And he said, and to repair the altar of the Lord, which is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God, because your life, it matters. And today, I'm speaking to somebody who's watching me right there in their home, wherever you're watching me from. And I pray today that even as Azariah spoke to King Asa, he said that for a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a teacher and without the law. Today, I want to let you know that we have now the opportunity that we have access to the true God, the true teacher and the true law. The Bible says in the book of Titus that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and to live soberly in this present age. And so today we have the opportunity to receive the grace of God to begin again and to live the life that God has intended for us to live. God is saying to you this morning that your life matters enough that he would come to this earth, 
that he would die on a cross for your sins so that whosoever would believe in Jesus Christ would have everlasting life. But in order for us to prosper in our future, we must tear it down so that we can build it up. And today, God wants you to know that your life matters. My desire is you, God. My desire is you. Better is one day in your courts, God. Better is one day in your house, God. Yeah. Better is one day in your courts, God. Yeah. Better is one day in your house, God. Better is one day in your courts, God. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere, yeah, than a thousand elsewhere, than a thousand elsewhere, yeah, than a thousand elsewhere, than a thousand elsewhere. Is you alone? Is you alone? My desire is you, God. Is you 